Madison, it's nice to see you. I'm glad you could make it. It is officially Olivey Blake week, which I'm not totally even 100% sure that I'm saying that right, but that's how I've been reading it in my head, and that's probably the first time that I've ever said it out loud. Is that right? You can totally correct me if I'm wrong. You guys know that I am on my fantasy girl fall kick. I was walking through Indigo a couple days ago, and I saw this on the shelf, and I was like, oh my god, yeah. I've seen a couple of people read this on, like, book vlogs. The only thing that I knew about her writing going in is that they're, like, fantasies that take place in, like, modern times. So there's, like, magic, magic systems, etc. except for it's in like modern day New York. I left the bookstore without getting it and then I woke up the next morning after finishing King of Wrath and was like, I need to go back and read that. There's absolutely nothing else that I want to read right now after seeing it. So I ran my little butt back to the bookstore, bought this and sat in Indigo for like two and a half hours and read like honestly a good chunk of this. My God, this is a six star motherfucking read for me. Six star motherfucking read and now i just want to read all of her books and see if they can somehow top this because this feels like emily henry all over again where the first one's going to be the best one this book shattered my soul in ways that i can't even explain but it gave me the idea that i want to read all of her books and see how it goes and then same as the emily henry video we're going to tier rank them at the end i was not at all planning to film this video so i didn't even have my camera when i started this this was one of the most romantic heartfelt books that i have ever read in my entire life like I, uh, I have no words. This book is about witches in like a modern day New York, but it is also a Romeo and Juliet retelling. I've heard a lot of people say that her writing is really pretentious, which I usually can't get behind. I hate having to Google words, which I definitely had to do with this book. But for some reason, because this felt like an old tragedy being retold in modern days, the pretentious air of the writing just made it so much more romantic and heartfelt and it felt more like important. It basically follows the Antonovas and the Fedorovs, which are like two rival witch families. The Antonovas are seven girls and the Fedorovs are three boys. Their families have always been like kind of connected but now they are like full-blown rivals. Despite the history that the oldest daughter and the oldest son and then other siblings throughout have with each other, their parents have just absolutely pinned the families against each other regardless of anybody's feelings for anybody. It was just turn after turn, things going wrong, tragedy after tragedy, the relationships between sisters and the relationships between brothers and parents and complicated relationships. It was beautiful. That being said, this video was completely impromptu. So I did just order the special edition from Indigo of Masters of Death because this is like a mini hardback from Indigo, which I love. I love that it's the same height as my other books. But I also found out that Indigo did like a special edition of Masters of Death. It's like a white cover if I'm not mistaken, but this same hardback shape. I haven't been able to find one for Atlas 6, so I'm praying that the paperback is the same size as this because I just, I think these books are going to destroy my soul. I don't know anything about literally any other of them, but we're going to get into it. It is officially Olivey Blake week. This is like my peak perfection fall read. Like it's literally screaming fall, but there is so much romance, but it's just, it's giving the right amount of fantasy that I need in September when I'm like inching my way back into the cold months, you know? That being said, we are going to go to Indigo and get Masters of Death and maybe the rest of her books, but we'll see because Indigo is a lot more expensive than Disordering them on Amazon, so. I have a mobile order for Madison. Thank you. about this cover this is the prettiest thing I've ever seen I have never picked an indigo exclusive cover before but I went out of my way to get this one because are you kidding me this is so much better than the mint so pretty but for some reason all the credit card machines are down in Canada and I just happen to have a little bit of cash on me and they had alone with you in the ether the same like mini 
hardback size, which like, oh, I can't get over it. Every hardback should be the size. The same as a paperback. All books should be the same size. Am I unpopular in that opinion? Because like, does it piss everyone off when books are different heights on their bookshelf? Or like, is that just me? Why are we not making books all the same height? But these mini hardbacks are like the height of a paperback is the prettiest and the best thing that I've ever seen. And like, these books on my shelf are gonna look so good, especially with one for my enemy. But Atlas X and Alice Paradox does not come in this size paperback or hardback, which like, why? I'm just gonna order them on Amazon because if they're not gonna be this mini adorable hardback, I don't care to spend more money on them than I have to. This one's on sale because she's the author of the month on Indigo, so it was only like $26, which I know if you're from the US, that's freaking crazy. Also, that's like 20 US dollars, right? $19.99 probably. And this one was not on sale and it was $37. It's like 200 pages. That's insane, $40. There's something about buying books in person that's just like a better experience, but it's just cripplingly more expensive. Like, are you kidding me? Oh, I'm like 30 or so pages in and so far my initial thoughts are kind of like meh. Like I kind of have no idea what's going on. Are being introduced to everybody still and it's so early on, but meh. I keep like putting it down, which is not a good sign. We'll see. I could also like just straight up be tired and like not in the mood to read. And this isn't like captivating enough yet. Masters of Death. So now this is the point in the video. Do you really need to shake right now? You do? Okay. Okay, now is the point in the video where I'm supposed to tell you what this book is kind of about. Like a little spoiler-free synopsis. Um, but I am 146 pages in. Pretty deep in there. That's not where my bookmark is. 148 pages in. And I don't really know, to be honest with you, what it's about. But don't get me wrong. Don't, don't get me wrong. The vibes in this are immaculate. I'm loving reading this. I'm enjoying every second of it. I'm not like putting it down. Um, what it's about, I don't really know. Did anybody else have this experience with this book? What I can tell you is that like 65, 70 pages in was when the characters finally kind of met. The characters I think are gonna matter. 70 pages in. It kind of felt like first 60, 70 pages were like the opening show credits, you know, like we're meeting, we're meeting the whole team. Again, the vibes were great. I still so enjoyed reading it. I just, if somebody asked me what I was reading and what it was about, I would have to say, I don't know. It basically follows, there's two like important characters from what I've gathered. There's Fox, who is the godson of death, meaning that like death is a person or at least like a personality in this. And he raised this mortal child, Fox. And then there's Viola, Vi, who was just like a regular graduate student on an archeology span trip and she got bit and she's a vampire now. She's not a regular vampire. She's a cool vampire. Again, I don't know why, but she's a cat at night. Is there some folklore behind this that I should have known going in? Her best friend is a demon. We have angels. We have foot soldiers for Satan. They are like normal people. You wouldn't know that they're around unless you were one of them. It sounds crazy. It is taking me a handful of time. That's such a weird way to describe a measure of time. I'm reading this really slow. It is two days after I started this now. The goal is to finish this this tonight, which like, I think I could. There are so many moments in this book that I add like, let me see if I can find one. Oh, on the first try, like little question mark, because I feel like they're an answer to something. They're things I think I'm onto, which is super presumptuous, because I still don't even know what I'm reading into yet. It is quite literally 6.30 p.m. right now. I am currently drinking a Red Bull the size of my actual head. So I believe in us. We're gonna finish this tonight. Did like three pages later just make this make sense? She did not. Okay, wow, how the turns have table. 
I did in fact finish Masters of Death last night. I did stay up until three in the morning finishing it. And I honestly think in large part due to the fact that I was reading very slow because I didn't want it to be over. Which if you reference that last clip that I spoke to you guys, the tables have turned. As of right now, I have settled on giving this like a four, four and a half stars. But how rent free this is living in my head and how much I cried this morning waking up or rereading my annotations has me thinking that it really truly is like one of the best books that I have ever read and is living rent free in my brain and is a six star read but I just don't think that I can give it that even like maybe I can silently in my own head know that that's what it means to me knowing that the first 200 pages I told you guys I have no fucking idea what's going on that being said I fully <laughs> I understand what's going on now, to say the least, but that was part of the story. I will elaborate. There's a part at the end of the book where Death, who's like kind of been a very main character in this book, said that the way that he commanded the story to be told probably flew over a lot of your head and a lot of it didn't make sense until coming to the end and it all came together. But because you are a mere mortal and can't understand all of the things that Death can understand, it makes sense how you wouldn't have been in the loop or understood what was going on the entire time, which kind of justified me in believing that maybe I'm not stupid and maybe that's how it's supposed to be read. That being said, I could totally see how this book could turn some people away and that some people might not love it but the message in this book slapped me in the face like really hard it does not help that I've been listening to rainy day ambient reading music while I am reading this her writing is just like one of the most beautiful like melancholic things that I have ever experienced I literally like 200 and something pages in texted this to someone trying to like sum up my thoughts and from that text on at like 11 I want to say I did not pick my phone up I did not get up I did not drink water I did not do anything until 3 in the morning and I was done this book in the last 60 pages just like ugly tears just sobbing i don't know if i'm just at a point in my life that this book hit really hard the whole message in this book the thing that's valuable about being alive and like living life is that it's temporal we have a finite amount of time and like that's what gives our emotions and our decisions power is knowing that like every time that you choose to do something to love someone to feel something you are doing it with like a moment in your finite amount of time and that is like what gives it value if you have like in an infinite amount of time then there will be infinite highs and infinite lows and nothing will really hold stake or hold the value the value comes from knowing that everything that is given everything that is felt will eventually be taken away this week has been if i say it lightly very weird for me it is these books are putting me in like a very strange headspace i am like extremely sentimental and emotional and i find value in like literally everything whether it's a character flaw or a character benefit i don't totally know because it definitely controls my existence just like being being in my 20s and like talking a lot with like the people in my life often about how much it would just be so much easier to not feel things reading this and getting kind of like the reminder the whole blessing of being alive and like being a human is feeling so much better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all it just like struck a chord with me in a lot of ways i don't think that is spoiling anything for you guys the whole concept of the games and what the games end up being in this is like really like the plot line so the message is just kind of like what's delivered through the story but i really think that if you're going to read this go into this knowing if you put in the thought and the time everything will come together in the end and like i think go into this like ready to learn something or feel something because if you told me that i would have such strong feelings for like the godson of death a vampire a demon a ghost an angel and a foot soldier of satan like i sound crazy i know i do but just like the literary devices that she used in this that were these characters it couldn't have been better and also it like toyed the line of being like something inexplicable in fantasy and something being explicable i've never had an answer to the question who would you want to have dinner with alive or dead until this very moment like i'll be like like i want to meet her i want to pick her brain i just want insight on this and i am in a weird headspace filming this i am like extremely i'm just an emotional wreck i did pick up alone with you in the ether this morning because i needed something to put my reading energy into after the shit storm that that did to my emotional regulation and immediately this one's already kind of doing the same thing this is like a really short 
sweet little book. I'm excited to see where this one goes. I'm like 30, 40 pages in. It basically follows a male main character and a female main character. The female main character derives a lot of her purpose in life from knowing that she can do whatever she wants. She can make whatever decision she wants to make. She can do something completely out of the norm. And that is like where she derives her life's purpose from, like the reason that she is here. She might usually make the same decisions, but knowing that she could do something like off the handle and random is like what keeps her going and then our male main character has kind of the opposite experience he like is studying the universe and like wants to understand the universe but is not like hasty with his decisions he understands that he would never be able to know all of the answers to his existential questions and that should drive him mad but because he is so founded in his routine and his cyclical existence he derives his purpose from existing kind of doing the same thing every day and this is basically i think six conversations between the two of them and how those two very different people's viewpoints in just six conversations can like change someone else's life but this has just been like an introspective week and i would just like love to pick her brain to understand how she sees the world after writing these beautiful heart-wrenching pieces <laughs> Okay, so far this one was absolutely the weirdest. I feel like my thoughts on this aren't like succinct yet. Like this was a strange reading experience. It started off as being like the six conversations between them and then a relationship develops from there. I mean, it says on here that it is a love story. So I feel like I could have assumed that, but the whole love story of this is a little bit deceiving because it's not like a happy-go-lucky little love story, which I immediately saw a TikTok, hello. You wanna say? Which almost like immediately after finishing this, I saw a TikTok of a girl being like, this was marketed to me as like a cutesy little love story. And if this has been marketed to you as that, that is not what this is. This is too deeply existentially troubled people for very different reasons going about life together and like falling in love for lack of a better word this is like kind of a hard read overarchingly sad but like in a beautiful kind of way her writing was there everything was there it was a very thought-provoking book it's like a quick little read but i will say i did put this down quite a bit and this is like definitely the hardest one so far to get into it's just kind of like a weird <laughs> Sorry, I don't, it put me in a weird headspace. After the six conversations that were like very dialogue heavy, I would say the last like third, maybe not that much, the last fourth, just like it's switching between perspectives and you're like following along on the character's brain waves. Like there's not a lot of like construct of time. It's more like the characters being like, this happened, it made me feel this way. And then this happened and then this here. And then I did this and that probably made him this feel this way. And then it would switch to the other person's perspective, which is exactly what it is like to exist as one of these people, I would assume. So was very well done. I think I'm gonna settle giving this a four. I really enjoyed it. The reading experience is not top tier, but again, I really appreciated the story and I feel like this deserves a four. But like the reading experience of it all was probably like a 3.75, but I'm gonna give it a four. The story deserves a four. Okay, it has been honestly i don't even remember the last time that i talked to you guys it has been a couple of days unexpectedly got really damn busy and i've been reading this like at the weirdest times possible i don't think i've even told you that i'm reading this we are on the atlas six by olive blake pretty deep i have like 100 pages left and i've just been reading this at like the most random chaotic times like in parking lots 10 pages before i finally get to go to bed kind of vibe my best friend got engaged and it was her engagement party and 
and a lot of shit hit the fan right before it and I ended up spending like 48 hours on and off with her and picking up stuff and on appointments etc this was my little like travel buddy you can see how beaten up she is from coming on all the adventures she got melted under my laptop when I fell asleep reading this didn't even know that was possible this is like taking me the longest time to get through I'm really enjoying it it's really good I just have truly not had a goddamn moment have I even told you what this is about? this is so chaotic okay the spoiler free premise of this is it's basically about the Alexandrian society which is this secret society or like secret library that has all of the knowledge of all the world and the rest of the world was under the impression that it had been burned down and lost but it had been protected by what has now become the Alexandrian society and every 10 years they pick the six best medines really good witches the best powerful people to compete for five spots in the alexandrian society this is definitely like a departure from what the other books i read by her still super beautifully written a little bit pretentious which you guys know i'm kind of living for but it's a lot more like straightforward it gives more fantasy vibe the action the adventure the trials the you know it's giving more of that less of a beautiful message kind of story i do think it's kind of slow this is the first of three the second alice paradox is out and will be in this video third doesn't come out until january introducing all the characters and stuff you get all the characters perspectives there's a lot of like you having questions about a character and then in the next chapter it's their chapter and it gets answered they all have really interesting powers that like mesh together really well for like an interesting story and i think what i'm enjoying the most about this is like the complex interpersonal relationships between every character and like what each character thinks of each other and at the end of the day they are competing like someone has to go at the end but they all want power and knowledge for very specific different reasons I'm hoping to literally sit down and just finish this because I feel like I keep being in it and then taken out of it again and I want to just like be fully immersed in this I feel like the action is really getting in sight right now I also like don't totally know how this is gonna set up for a second and a third book so I'm excited to know what the hell that's about in true Olive Blake fashion there is such a beautiful book art and it just makes the reading experience so much better I also may or may not have booked a tattoo appointment so if I did and Ash had time for me this week which would be crazy because she's booked out for literally months there might be a little tattoo in this video i guess you guys already know because if i get one it's in the title it's literally pouring rain outside and like six degrees so this is like the perfect reading weather executive decision to ignore the absolute nest on top of my head at this moment. I ended up last minute having to come home up north to where my parents live. They're not even home. There was a smoke detector going off and we have a kitty in the house and our cats that are confined. I had to drive the two hours in the middle of the night last night to come here. I had like four pages left in this when I had to leave and if you've read this you know you can't just leave I can't this on top of my head right now if you've read this you know you can't just leave four pages left in this book and go to bed like you need to know what's gonna happen I am convinced after reading this, after reading everything, but especially after reading this, that every single thing that Olive Blake puts out is a masterpiece. Like she is the queen of the redirect. This bun, I can't. I need to fix it. This is like slightly less aggressive, right? She does monotony so well. Like there were so many times in this book that you're like kind of, I just think she's a mastermind. You're clued into things like a tiny bit and in the moment you're kind of like, that's weird, why'd you say that? Maybe that means something. But what's going on in the interim when you're not really figuring things out but just like going along with the characters throughout the year, you kind of like not forget, you remember because then when they come up later on, you're like, oh yeah, I could have caught on to that but no, you couldn't have. There are so many redirects, misdirects. It's just fun. Another thing about her writing that is so damn cool Cool because these characters evolve devolve for most instances and change so much throughout but it happens so slowly and like within their minds you're watching them go through it that the contrast between the characters in the beginning to now the beginning of atlas paradox is so entirely different but you like went along it with them and like didn't even really notice it happening you were in it with them i don't know how to explain it but it was really when i got into atlas paradox this morning i started it last night i read two pages you know when you're like i'm in a reading mood and then you're like it's two in the morning no i'm not i really realized in this one how quick 
she can redirect, misdirect. This starts right off of the cliffhanger in this, which I will say I'm a little bit scared for the third one coming out of January because I feel like I'm gonna forget a lot. You get like a little bit of the twist at the end happening, but then it kind of just goes back to the monotony, but it's so interesting. It's still so good. Every time that there's like something happening that's like not that important, you're discovering something about a character, how they feel. You're like getting nuances to the plot that like are going to support some later on thing. I feel like I'm talking a lot of nonsense. Do you know what I mean? I said it in Masters of Death. It's even in like the last chapter of Masters of Death. I did not understand what was going on. I enjoyed it. The vibes were great right masters of death y'all remember and then at the end they're like you're not really supposed to get it like it's supposed to come together later on and i kind of feel like that's how all her writing is like she has a master goddamn plan she knows what's gonna happen but she's only gonna give you like the teeny tiniest of breadcrumbs and you're gonna like kind of experience with the characters i don't know how to explain it i really am enjoying these honestly more than i was expecting i'm on page 100 i literally can't tell you what this one is about but i will rank them all at the end still based on how things go Wait, really? <laughs> Guess where I'm going? That's a weird assumption. I'm getting tattooed. Oh, I thought it, I thought it was this afternoon. No, it's tonight. Oh, I see. Well, I knew you were going. <laughs> Don't sound happy about it. seen a tattoo on my body before this is the girl say hi girl hi <laughs> Just like that, we are officially done reading our Olive e. Blake books for an entire week-ish. This video took me a lot longer than a week, if we're completely honest. I literally just finished Alice Paradox, and I will say I enjoyed this quite a bit more than Alice 6. I don't know where my rating is totally going to settle on it yet, but I was a lot more enamored with the world this time, and I feel like we were in on a lot of the secrets from Atlas 6 that come out at the end. So it just felt like we were more included in the story for lack of a better word her writing was still there the setting was still there the vibes were still there the interpersonal relationships were still there it is officially time to take all of the books that we've read this week all the olive blake i have ever read and tier rank it because why not just for fun now i do have to say before we get into this the lowest i rated a book this week was four stars which is freaking amazing so if you can't tell from that that i am absolutely one of olive's biggest fans i literally don't know what will i quite literally got a tattoo for her writing in this video it is still second skinned up in here but you guys have seen it at this point but that being said the lowest ranked book is still like the worst of the best i enjoyed every single moment of this reading experience coming in fifth is alone with you in the ether i absolutely adored this story but i will say this is the only book that i read this week where i found myself putting it down a lot i feel like i said it in my other explanation there was not a lot of conversation going on and a lot of like us following chaotic brain waves which i found like had me putting it down semi-frequently love that we like explored characters who are like quite a bit emotionally fucked up for lack of a better word and i really appreciated the story i just found this isn't one that i would like pick up and read again even though i'm really thankful that I did pick up and read it when I read it. This is like one of many books that I think you should read if you're kind of in an existential crisis yourself because she explores the topic so well. And in fourth place, we have Atlas Six. I feel like you guys kind of could have anticipated this one because I, for lack of a better word, had no time to read this. And I read it in like little tiny 20, 30 page sprints. It has been 
through so much there is so many like the pages are fucked up this book has seen better days i really enjoyed this story i just felt it like kind of a tiny bit slow atlas paradox is definitely coming in third i enjoyed this one like kind of quite a bit better i feel like this is going to settle like 4.5 but i will say i am impatiently waiting for the third one to come out just so we can have like all of the goddamn answers i really think the series is worth a read especially for fall it is giving intense fall dark academia vibes and it was beautiful now these two are hard for me because these both hold very special important places in my heart at this point this is a six star that i literally loved so much i got it tattooed on my body and the message in this was like unlike anything else that i have read but if i had to decide this would definitely have to come in second because as you guys know the first like 200 ish pages of this i had like practically no idea what was going on the vibes were great they were there even though i enjoyed every single second of it and this book destroyed me emotionally like i think i was genuinely in a bit of like a depressive rut for like at least 24 hours after i cannot wait to give this to a daughter someday when she is kind of questioning the same things because this did a lot to my psyche about my thoughts on everything this book covers <laughs> and last but not least we have my baby one for my enemy this is like become one of my most prized possessions one of my favorite books of all time this book will live rent free in my head for quite literally the rest of my life i literally have a love and sasha quote tattooed on my body for the rest of my life so if that doesn't explain that this 100 percent has to be in first place i literally don't know what could and just like that this is our official tier ranking for our week of reading all the blake books i feel like you guys know from watching this video that i enjoyed every single second of this experience i genuinely think that all blake has the keys to the universe and she has some answers that i don't have wow did these hit me in a way i really think that she is like a genius at writing mystery romance stories like the big picture like i can't even fathom the map that's in her head of where the story is gonna go because so many times tiny nuanced things connect in the end and like she's a mastermind that's all i have to say i will say after reading like a pretty intense plot heavy week of books i'm excited to pick up some fluffy little romance or like easy little fantasy i hope you guys enjoyed this video i love making reading vlogs so let me know what type of these vlogs you guys want in the future make sure you guys are following me on instagram and tiktok that's where like i update my in the moment reads i'll see you in the next one love you bye